It's funny as well because we talked about the two teams coming in as the favourites, that being Sinners and Fiend, and we looked at Fiend probably being the better of those two squads by technicality, by just like a slight little yeah. margin. So seeing them actually drop into the lower bracket and Sinners not lose a map so far, that is, I think, a proving point that Fiend are going to need to step up to to try and sort of you know prove that they are a, a, a still respectable squad here in the lower bracket. Is their run that they're going to take, and they've got to beat out Onyx to start things off. Pistol round with Fiend on the CT side. Onyx's map pick, of course, they can straight into to the uh, uh, Bernardo control is Red Star challenging against JR. Han spotted back towards the stack position. Bubble and Han continuing to tap forward against the T side players, but only doing damage, no kills. And now allows with that information to be gathered some more aggression and more of a push to come out from the apartment's position. They're not messing around. Flash over the top, they're going. And that's Dreamer in with his frag on towards Dim Key. Davin Impossible combined to get one player, but they haven't spotted Victor. They will do now as the bomb gets dropped. Bond can get a quick responsive in. So three on three, the bomb should get planted down towards the back of Shutter. Red Star doesn't have an angle on it. We'll see his man, but focusing on Bondic mostly. He's going to pull his attention away for a second. Dav can get a kill for it. Uh, Red Star all comes down to how he can group up with Han and JR looks the wrong way for a moment. Bondic is now stuck in the open. Has to move out to the pit position. Try and see if he can clutch. USP looking up at the stack, knows that Han's around there somewhere, trying to take that engagement, take some damage instead. Now they're on the bomb, taps forward, Han gonna try body block Red Star, Red Star gets some damage done towards him, they can't get a kill against the man. 21 HP, they're gonna swarm him with a sheer numbers game, and finally Red Star gets that frag. No okay. kits in though, I think it's gonna be a little no. bit too late, and yeah, they recognize it. They're out of there, Onyx have stolen the pistol. A lot of time wasting going on in that pestle round. We saw some good trades out for the T side players getting down into that mini pit position, dealing with both Dreamer and Victor pretty much instantly into the round. And for Onyx, just having Bondic just playing time, not really over peeking out from that pit position. For Fiends, they needed to get onto that bomb and have another teammate, whether it be Han or Red Star, to peek on the contact to try and drive that fight away. Instead, they fight together. And because of that, they get drawn away from the bomb site. They don't have a kit to work with. And Onyx win the first pestle round. Well, what an important start. They can't afford to lose much to the Fiend side. If they let them take an inch, they'll take a mile back. You can see the Force Bite is going to try and do just that. Scout in for Han, for Masters on two other individuals, and SMG for Victor. Bubble with the Deagle. Onyx, three AKs and two Mac 10s. Mostly focusing on those AKs to get the kills in. The Mac 10s to get some extra money if they can do so. The focus is the round, though. Now, Fiend have been making some changes to their Inferno on their CT side. We'll see a bit more presence passively over at the B site. For the moment, the Balcony and Pit player are going to be hit again. Bond gets that first kill. Damage dive heavily alongside Dimki, who's also pretty low. A 5 on 3 scenario. But over on the SMG and one of the Famasis, the scout of Han's going to stick around here. Hope that he can catch some T side presence. The bomb's going to go down, and there's no chance for a retake for Fiend. They know it. They're out of there. And normally, we actually give a lot of praise to Dreamer and Victor to defend that A site from the short takes and the app pops. So far, they've been rolled. They have not been able to find a lot of success at all. Good utility usage is coming through from Onyx, and this is going to be a part of their play style that I'll be keeping an eye on as this series progresses forward, Jay, because so far, they're first in the event for utility ADR, almost 35 per round. Two zero start for the Onyx side. Fiend... Have a new take this one on the chin. And again, starting things off well enough for the T side of Onyx. No real buyback for the Fiend players that went down to the level. Han and Red Star can have a little bit of firepower to work into round three. But on paper, this should be a 3 0 start for the T's. Uh, you'd have to imagine so. Just that bait to come in. The first player diving out of the apartments, moving over to that left-hand side, drawing the attention over from Draymar, and just allowing that quick peek to come through from the second player with the rifle. Fiend can't imagine too much economical success going into the third round. Han had an opportunity of taking a first pick through mid in the last round. Didn't find it. Wonder if it'll happen this time. Okay, there it is. Yes, there's your answer. Very quickly after asking it, Dwayne. That's how yeah. I like it. <laughs> Han straight in. JL straight out. Red Star's going to force forward as well alongside the Deagle of Bubble. Spotting them. Unable to get the kills for it. They've done quite a hefty amount of damage, though. Impulse less than 50. And with that killing against JR, there's potential for Fiend to steal this round. Yeah, for sure there is. It all comes down to this gamble stack, and they're playing four players down on this A site. You've still got Red Star that's peaking top banana, just trying to catch any information. And for Onyx, it all just comes down to are they running into the stack, or are they able to drive a rotation away? Team in the face with Bubble... Veins that nade and gets out towards cover here, at least ahead of that smoke. Spamming through on towards Impulse. Next tagged up. 
several players down at 50 or thereabouts. The rotations will come into that B site, and it's only Red Star to defend. He's got backup that can't get there, but they'll be very slow. And yeah, no one's playing out to CT Spawn, and so the quick wraps are going to have to be bubble with that P250, or at least the Deagle to start moving his way over. Red Star just needs to get one pick. Try and stay alive for as long as possible in dark. Smoke at cross, and backup will rotate heavily over to Fiend. Again, they'll be a little bit slow. Red Star's playing passive for it. There's no Molotovs for the T side that can press them out, flush them out of the, uh, the dark position. Time's running short as well. Nades in. That missed out towards New Box. So Red Star's going to continue to wait back here. Bait in one player. Dav can find Bubble in the back line. But he gets caught by Red Star. Looking for the triple. That's exactly what he gets. Impulse 1v3 for him. Held into the corner. And time's taken away against him. He does find Red Star on that trade. But he doesn't last much longer. Dreamer with the kill. And Fiend with the first. Yeah, poor form. They're coming in for Onyx. And I don't know what that comes down to. Whether it's nerves. They had the two smokes down at that B site. They were very oh. slow to act. And then just, they're lining up, aren't they, Jay? They're giving up individual jewels to Red Star. As soon as this peak comes in, right, players have got to start moving together. Dav's drawn towards CT spawn, Bondic peaks, and then Impulse is, is going confidence. It's miscommunication coming through from the T's. Red Star just having temerity to hold on to that position. Just hold patience and wait for them to overextend, which is exactly what he got there. One of the reasons why we highlighted him as player to watch, he's on the AWP now. For his transgressions, and he's going to put it to great effect, finding JR and starting things off in this round. I'm interested to know why Red Star's picking up the AWP straight away, because what we've seen from them recently on Inferno is we actually see him not AWPing as much as he used to. We're seeing some variation, and this time around, getting that opening pick out to Banana, Onyx going short side. On top of the box, looking over. Dreamer can't hold on for much longer. Dab and Dimki goes falling in, pulse down. Bondit, last man standing, overwhelmed by the sheer force of Fiends, locking out the crossfire, getting three AKs and getting a quick second to their board. We even see for JR, he's just a B lurk, and because he's the B lurk, it means that he can't really use any util for him to go for an info play. Has to get up onto that logs position dry, doesn't have a flash to come over at all, and just gets picked off. From there, the short side com combo, really, is what it, I could call it from Fiend. They all start peeking on each other's contact, nothing gets found, and for Onyx, they've run out of money. And Glock's in, P250 on impulse. Nice and A to start things off for Hart, and of course, not a lot of care to protect themselves from the utility or the rest of the rifles that Fiend have in their hands. So Onyx. It's a facing and hoping they can get a kill, maybe get a bomb plant if at all possible. It's very unlikely though, and I think they recognize that. Victor with two, kills Dreamer with one, Victor with a triple. JR stands alone. And yeah, Red Star does get baited, so the enemy piece is going to repeat back in. Make sure that that Glock falls. Fiend get up to three. And I don't know if you saw it, Jay, but Bubble put out a tweet a couple of days ago saying that Fiend was actually looking for a coach. We know with the organization standpoint, they had an analyst of, uh, of Bunter, I believe his name was, for a few weeks. And that's it. They've never had a coach. They haven't had a lot of support staff. And maybe knowing, okay, we've reached 17th in the world. We've qualified for the V4 land. We've done very well in some of the other events. It's probably time that we get some, uh, some new faces or at least a new face. You can imagine that their their focus is going to be about stepping up to that tier one position. It's the illustrious, sure. uh, it's the illustrious goal that everyone except Gambit seems to miss out on when it comes to the tier two split team. The Fiend, they have been on the cusp of it for a while. Keep our eyes up and see where they can go with this. Right now, Focus turns towards the gun round of Onyx and uh, what will be a stepping stone upon their way to that position. Smokes on is depressing the apartments. T's have apartments control. We'll try to walk up towards mid. Yeah, Onyx are not being presented with many aggressive fights at all. We're not seeing Fiend play into the apartments. They're playing incredibly deep up on that short side and into the balcony. Nade going into that brackets position is going to dunk down onto Impulse to 68. And for Onyx, they've got plenty of options. They don't have a massive amount of banana control. They've got a lot of time. They've got some util. And even Red Star with the AWP, he's so passive on B. So he's just waiting for a jump spot at the half wall. Played with the AWP so well so far. I think he just missed out on a pixel. Not much in it all. He does see Impulse, but can't get a shot towards him. That leads to his death, actually. Counter Smoke from Bubbles going to be a little bit late to the party, doing damage towards a couple of players involved in this, but not a lot to get a kill. And in the end, it gets overwhelmed by JR. The knife's pulled out and everything. Fiend have got to back off. A 5v3 retake. Borderline impossible. Yeah, get out of there quickly. Onyx, great sight take. Dimki and JR just working together. And as soon as you realize the position where 
you're down by men. You haven't really got too much impact left to be found. Just hold on to the weapons. You've got those AKs. You don't want to risk them being dropped. And for Onyx, it's a decent return by them. They're back to three apiece. And they have still got some bite on this map. They picked it for a good reason. At the very least, it is one of those natural sort of fittings for them. They have played it the most out of any map in the pool. The concern, really, when it comes to their results is the fact that their wins have been against some lesser opposition, the likes yeah. of FTW, the uh, the East Uber side, obviously. We saw during the uh, Love Racket matches during uh, you know during this uh, this tournament, teams like India Ray, uh, Banker Pepsi, Infinite. You know, th th these aren't teams that aren't at the same level as Fiend are. So for Onyx, that is their big concern. Although that being said, they are still doing relatively well in the early game. It's all about keeping it competitive and tight. That's what they've got to expect. And for Han, going to get that AWP, back, look back in for a mid-pick. And for Onyx, we're seeing some more pace going out to this banana position. They're going to make it work. Impulse with the AWP in his hands. Now finds Bubble. Going to lean in against Redstar, who doesn't have the AWP this time, but evades the shot anyway. Sees him secondary peeking in. They're getting for a third peek, in fact. AK swing back for JR. Does catch off the AWP. Involved Han. To drop to a 5 versus 3 now, favor of Onyx. Red Star suppressed in the corner. He's back up to get here or he needs to escape. Now he's going to provide some support. Spraying through on towards Dav does not catch him for dead. The bomb can go down successfully. And again, we're in this situation at a 2 minus advantage for Fiend. We're going to fall back and save their weapons again. Onyx will have the lead. Uh, just trying to get back over to that AWP if they can. Just trying to fight for it. Victor does eventually get one kill through the spam. We now see further util coming in. And yeah, Victor's going to be able to pick up that AWP that got blown back with a HE. Onyx being up to get up to four. I love this lurk out for Bonnie. This could be even further damage being done to the CTs. And now towards the site itself, expecting rotations to come back towards Pit. They're going to wait in the CT spawn because I think they know that there's something going on here. I think Dreamer might have caught some information. Gonna keep his eyes on the apartments and just wait for footsteps, wait for information. Bondic won't overextend and give up his life needlessly. There will still be three rifles in play for Fiend. They can buy around these weapons. They've got plenty of cash. The economy is still pretty decent. But Onyx have gained the lead again. Yeah, just some good timings, honestly, with that peak. We see the way that they aggress forward, get impulse into a very fast and moving forward position towards the top of Banana. And then even with that, they deal with the first B echo. You go with it. You just continue the pace. JR is able to catch one of the rotates of Han. And Onyx take the lead back themselves. Fiend getting Han aggressive in towards that mid position again. Fiend have probably got to try and work on their protocols out on this B side because it does seem as if for Onyx, they are overwhelming B with ease. Boost up for the AWP. Down into the entryway towards the B site. And again, they're going to find Red Star getting aggressive. You mentioned how Fiend have adjusted to try to go a bit more passive on this B site. And you can see why they wanted to do that. The times they've gone aggressive haven't always worked out that well. No, not at all. They've been punished any time they've gone up to the sandbags or up to the car positions. Just any time they've played deeper, they've found more success. Onyx with a very high conversion rate when it comes to the 5v4 situation. So look to them as comfortability to be able to win this round. Back into the A site, they could be running into three players as a stack. Orp set for Han, ready for the uh, brackets entrance to be taken by the Onyx side. And Smokes up to try to suppress him. Does that towards Arches and Moto instead. Incendiary back, where he face blind is a couple inches off the next player. The T side line doesn't catch a kill for it, though it's not quite good enough. JR will fall to Victor instead. A four on four scenario brought back here by the Fiend side. And Dreamer takes his face, gets two more kills for it. Looks up towards the apartments as a jump out from Bond that goes awry. An impulse dealt with by Han for a fourth round. Fiend have equalized. A dream is one of those players where you see him massive in some rounds and then you might not see him again for another four or five rounds just because of the kind of player he is. He's an anchor hold out to the apartments and from pit. And right there, Victor takes the first kill onto that wraparound that comes into long and just sets Dream up. He's even being mollied in pit. He gets forced out to the open and even on the off angle, Jay, he still delivers. I love that third spray as well, just to adjust his crosshair perfectly in line mm. with the player dropping down. Like, that's talent you can't teach. Han grabs the impulse, kicks things off. Once again for the T side line, they are down a man, and Fiend have got back momentum control on all sorts for this CT force. Yeah, seeing Han go aggressive with the AWP, I'm surprised they did that, considering how much limited success Red Star did making that exact same play. Maybe it's the position, not the player. Onyx looking to try and see if they can find a, a slight way back in, and 
knowing that no one was even really in trading positions, it just allows Fiend to play the advantage and play passive bubble up on this long position, just jiggle peeking. Buying info. Wait for a flashbang or debate them in. See them going out towards Arch. Then he calls that info into his teammates. There's only two players to defend, though. Han sat back at new box. Might catch the first T side player out. Indeed, he does get that shot. Red Star hears the shots of the second man. Bonnet with his knife in. He's going to get caught off for it. Nice kill. Two players left. One player left. JR against five. Bonnet is back. Now being backstabbed in by the A players. They've rotated through mid bubble. Will get caught. At least one good casualty can go his way. But to fight his way out of one direction, he's got to get two more kills. Against the CT forces, and Fiend is just going to try and bait him in. Either kill him after time or kill him as he escapes. The banana control flashes forward, checking all corners. And there it is, Victor to close the round. Harm with another triple. Fiend finding the lead again. Yeah, there's no point in him throwing that AWP over sort of that the CTs can't get it. The money's so strong there for Fiend, where for Onyx, you're thinking, okay, even if we get rid of this orb, they could invest into a double. So let's just try and see if we can find more impact with it. JR's not able to find any more. And back to the eco we go. This is an opportunity now for the Belgarians to start bolstering up their lead. Interesting you bring up the double orb at that time because they could have easily brought it in, as you mentioned. The money was there. Yeah. They got a free one in that previous round, but they're just going to opt for the singles. Han, set towards mid. That's it. I mean, they could have had Bubble or Red Star set themselves up towards Bernard and just have the crossfire to suppress them. I guess they recognize for an eco, it's probably not worth it to invest that heavy into this round. An interesting sort of uh, ob observation, though. Keep your eyes on that double orb setup when it comes out later. Yeah, Onyx just hoping to see if they can bombard into this brackets take and go back into A. The problem is, with all the CTs playing so passive, it's difficult to get an opening man advantage. Upset in, Han still waiting and watching, sees two players crossing and focuses exclusively on Dimki. Nice frag, second one in on Bondit, sees a third player as well, he just does not miss. Victor to clean up Dav, and JR's left alone in the one versus five. It's funny how we mentioned Red Star, he had a great set of early, ga uh, uh, early game frags, and now it's Han that picks up the slacks for Fiend. Are we surprised though? We know how much of a no. superstar this harm player can be and even for JR, no more is going to be found. And I was, I was having a conversation on, on Twitter uh, a few days ago about uh, Poison because obviously he's just been, what, benched from complexity and I was thinking to myself, surely there's no room for him on Fiend or on Skate. Like when we think about the Bulgarian teams that are really on the rise, even for someone with the likes of Poison that's got so much experience, when you've got Star Raupers already in these teams, I don't think either of them is going to play the risk to try and get him because you wouldn't want to let Han go bit of a difficult sort of topic to address because obviously it does feel like the obvious answer but it's not as obvious as people might think for sure uh, maybe we could discuss that at a later date it's probably worth an hour in its own right <laughs> or being of Han watching out from the apartment seeing a gap in that smoke Ooh, Ooh. spray from Dimki is very well timed it's not quite good enough to get the kill it's damaging the 55 though yeah, lovely stuff from Dimki. Uh, would have heard the scopes, there would have been some information, a massive amount, and is able to do some spam damage, get some early pointers on the board for Onyx when it comes into round 11. And retaking nades even to the top of Banana. No one's even taken that area of the map. No, well, JR's all the way back at Woodstack. He's not going to bother with uh, taking that position as of right now. Might need his teammates to come in and back him up, but they're going to rotate out towards mid in the apartments, focus entirely on the A site. They've got two players over at Pit, one player over at Long. Again, Fiend having their hands played into by Onyx. Even a fourth player is going to rotate as they recognize the play that's going on. Two nades stacked out towards Pit. Dreamer gets his kill regardless. Impulse can't find that trade. Flashbangs in as Victor and Han can catch the next couple of players. Bondit, Dimki falling. Impulse next to go. JR way out of dodge. Trying to play the low towards the B site. And little did he know that there was nobody out there. Now he's just playing the flank to probably go down here. There's no chance for him in this round of 1v4. And notice how the first and second round, so the pistol and the uh, anti-eco that they had, they found a lot of success with the apps pops, didn't they? Just getting those flash over high, being able to deal with Dreamer and Victor, really just a breeze, not really being challenged. Now we look at the setup out on the short side and defending that pit, mini pit and balcony area, and Fiend is just all over it. Onyx are struggling to get those opening man advantages. They're struggling to be able to defeat some of these anchor players. Fiend getting up to seven, and Onyx... Boy, I don't know where they need to go from here. They need some star players. Impulse isn't finding much. We're not seeing Dimki put much on the board. And, and Dimki was a guy that we were highlighting to the start of the game. Of Watch out for him. He's, he's going to be great. He's been very decent for them so far. He's 2-8.
Done a great job of shutting him down here, Fiend. We mentioned before how his highlights have been against lower caliber opponents and is showing right now against the Fiend side. I don't know whether he's not mustered up that confidence or what. They need him to get online and real quick here. Onyx down to the eco, the hero AK once again. More of a half buy around the eco. Upgrade pistols. A little bit of utility. Still JR heavy investing into this round. I'm trying to get Onyx set up with something, anything at this stage. Um, for Fiend, the beauty that I love from them, not only on Inferno, but just their entire map pool, is they do make a lot of changes to the way they play. For you and I, Jay, we've casted Fiend over 20 times in the last five months in BO3s, and every time I watch them, I feel like I'm getting something different. Like I'm getting an AWP in a different position, or I'm getting a setup where they'd not want a double AWP, and that is going to make it very difficult for some of these other teams to get some reads. Even for Hunt, it just oh. over. What a shot that is. Mate, he's on point today. He is on point today. Missing that second shot as soon as I say it, so I've cast this curse unfortunately. But the nades to respond to give Dav eight points of health. I mean, it probably should allow him to kill from any of the rifles here. And Han does get his second kill back in at the end. M4 faces up above all, gets triple. Actually stolen away by Han's nade, but still, that's going to be an eighth for the Fiend side. Only one casualty taken. And I'd have to imagine Oscar on the other side of the bracket is looking at this thinking, geez, I've got a contender, don't I? Normally we always talk about Oscar and how sick he could be with the NWP for this inner side. Han is, is pretty much hitting everything. Anytime there's a kill that needs to be made, he's the one to do so. Bubble assisting with that run out through CT. Onyx still sitting on four. This streak's starting to build for Fiend. We have the half. AWP of Red Star. It's going to get caught off by the flashbangs this time. JR just overwhelms with the Mac 10, and now Bubbles are going to call in some backup. The first time we bring out the double orb setup, and Red Star's first to go. JR. Not going to put that orb into decent effect, but Bubble has other ideas. Read that boost so well. Kill against the man. It's a 4v4 scenario. As much as I respect Red Star as a player, and I think he's a great hybrid player, I think he's better on the rifle on Inferno. We've seen it before in this map in the first half, how many times he's had that double up in his hand, and it, it just hasn't quite worked out. He's been stronger when it comes to the M4, so I would like to see that change coming forward for Fiend for the rest of the half. For now, Onyx think to themselves, we could get a timing. We could get a walkout. They're still going to deal with this AWP, though. No composition as Hans' AWP does look around. Check for position, get back up on top of the coffins. Look over to that main entrance, expecting someone from Onyx to go for a boost up. They gave him the opportunity with the smokes, and they know there's a player in that cubby corner. No one's going to bite on the bit, though. Onyx is setting up for the set piece. Yeah, Han has to try and get mollied or smoked off. They've got no flashes, so there's no way they can drive him out of position. He's going to hold. Dots in a Han, getting out of dodge. AWP leans up, takes... Another good blind shot in against him. He sees him in the boost spot, but can't catch the kill still. Dab will go for the bomb. Plot! Chance for Hana. Catch him indeed. He does. Impulse finds Bubble, and Dimki can respond to a three on two. So the advantage does favor Onyx in the end. They extend it to a two man advantage. Dreamer all the way back in CT. Caught off by Impulse's orb. And Onyx will have a fifth. Uh, we just saw there from Fiend, both players are kind of in different positions to defend against the big Zek. Red Star gets overwhelmed very quickly. Bubble's able to fight back to the half wall and get a 4v4. It's just that him and Han are kind of playing behind smokes. Han gets overwhelmed and Dimki really shows up in the post plan. Finally as well, we mentioned how he has been a bit quiet in this uh, game. And for this one round, he's got himself up on a decent position. Tactical pause called Fiend. in for this side. I imagine it probably would be Fiend, given the fact they just lost a round. And uh, yeah, that seems to be the case. I do like it. Again, we've talked about discipline yeah. from Fiend in the past and how they love to just sort of take a moment and think, right, we, we, we lost that round pretty unnecessarily. What can we do to improve it? And apparently the double orb setup seems to be their answer. Okay. Um... Well, they're going to have some thought about this and, and how they want to play it. have noticed, too, that they've been slightly more aggressive in their approach to this top banana position than they have previously. Han looking to flash out from mid. He was doing a lot of that in the early rounds. Onyx never really give him a chance of an early peek in mid. Well, now they know that they've got Han set up, who's been fragging like a beast. I don't really want to give up those kills very early towards him. Try and isolate Red Star, who's been the easier AWP to deal with. He's much more passively back on this B site. I mean, we mentioned earlier how passive Fiend can like to be on this particular side of the map. I'll try and set up for it. Tindieri's on to position. Smokes up against Danny. Utility set up for Fiend, trying to suppress Onyx. Give him no breathing room. 
Uh, Fiend have not given away much information on A at all. Bondic has not been able to hear any sound cues of some of the rotators. And if the utility going down, uh, this is actually going to be a fake. The bomb is in banana. Jump face, trying to get information. Keep those three players over there, Bondic. Make as much noise as possible. Han set with the orb, ready for him to act. Tor turns away at the wrong moment. The timing's perfect, but Red Star's shot is just a little bit better. Bubble, flashbang off against the wall here. Expecting there to be some more T-side presence held back. Red Star does get forced off of angle and reposition towards the CT position. Bondix found the wrap, though. Ooh, they've completely evaded it. Fiend have let him cross. Oh my goodness, though. Dinky needs to look into the back lines. They've got no oh idea my they're God. In. Oh, they're gonna get sandwiched. It's all a case of who's back. That works out better. Right now, it's working with the CT basis. Red Star accounts for Bonding. Looks to the back line. Here, the AWP of Impulse misses as Victor jumps around the corner, gets his kill. Red Star tries to win one more. There is a trade for Dav, but it's going to be Victor to over on the last of Bonding. 9 5 for Fiend. They look fantastic still. And put yourself in Onyx's shoes for a moment there, Jay. You think to yourself, we've lost that first pick to Red Star. Slow it down. We've got the backstab. We've got a player that's sneaking in the back lines. Bonding's been able to get into Arch, into CT spawn. You don't want to act. You want to stay around that top and under position and use that lurk to give yourself the most success possible. What they don't know is Fiend are coming short side. They're coming down from mid. They're coming into Banana. And a tactical timeout for Onyx this time because they should have had that round pretty nicely won. Found the only gap in the Fiend defense and still fell to their own counter backstab. How quickly Fiend reacted to that. A round to behold here for this side and Onyx know that they're going to have to behold it in the force by Mac 10s in for round 15. This is not looking good for them. All upset. Molotov's in. Nades back. Han leaning up, looking to catch the first of Bondic, but unscopes at the right moment, allowed that player to get away. And the shot's in from Red Star. I think that caught JR with a bit of tag damage. Oh, that nade definitely did some more, didn't it? Even the incendiary coming down to deal with him completely. Bubble is starting to rotate away, and the T's might just speed it up. Bray is on the bubble, gets his kill onto Dimki, two left standing, and Onyx just falling apart, just falling apart for the final round of the half. Bondic trying to get a recovery play, but Victor deals with him just as quickly, and Impulse is a known entity. All going to wrap their way in, get ready to seal him in the B-bomb site. Probably get the kill after the facts. Does get one good shot on Victor, okay, that's pretty impressive. The adjustment to the second man, not quite great. Red Star's got his upset, giving up the shot of position. Not giving up the kills, though. No one in the CT side give up the kills. It's 10-5 for Fina. Hell of a half to start things off on the CT side. Their own opponents, Matt Pick, may still fall out of favor after the break.
Alrighty, well, Onyx J pushing down mid, getting that early advantage, and for Fiend, they're trapped, they can't move! Pistol out of the second half, already going live, and somehow Fiend fight their way out of this position, get right back into control in a 3 versus 3 scenario. Onyx's aggression issue felt like it was going to work out for them, but now they stand at evens in the pistol. Well, they worked that back. We see the way that Onyx applies much pressure with them as aggression to get in the face of their opposition. And while it works for a couple of opening man advantages, they don't recover it. And now for Fiends, Onyx are thinking to themselves, where have they gone? Impulse is going to start making an info play. And he might not see anything at all. He might think they're going into Banana. USP out, checking the side entrance a second mid and up towards the stairs position. Taps on, sees the individual, gets some more damage against them, but... Can't quite seem to catch the frag. Streamer swings back, does find Impulse. Great kill back in with the Fiend side. They will get towards that A bomb site if they can overwhelm Dab as the only player left to defuse kit on him. But they're going to wrap towards B site instead. Try to catch JR. Knife in hand. This could be a very awkward engagement. The player's been seen. The footsteps been heard. Dreamer comes up on top somehow. Of course he does. Easy pick to come in for Dreamer, and I don't know how Onyx have bottled this. So this was such a good position for them to be in. They had a 5 on 3, things look comfortable, and then overpeaking starts coming in. They get punished, and Dreamer just manages 3 kills in this round. Against all odds as well, in from Speedway, that was a very awkward engagement. Just shots left and right and back and forth, and none of them really connecting until the very, very last few bullets of the mags. Now Dab's onto the clutch, Diffuse Kit again is on him, he's baited in the shot out towards the CT cross, sees the player in the bat lines, but Victor gets that kill before he can even blink, and that's an 11th on the board for Fiends. And even when you look at Inferno recently from the Fiend side, they're on a three-map winning streak, Skade, Big, Copenhagen Flames, some of the results before that, triple overtime against Copenhagen Flames, take the Astralis to nine rounds, you're facing a team who's strong on this map of Inferno, and I would say in the last month, maybe you could even put it down to three weeks or so, we're starting to see a shift where Fiend actually don't mind picking into Inferno, so knowing the Onyx go in for this pick, they need to show up, and they just haven't done so, they had a very good start to this map, ever since then, though, they've lost their competitive edge. Fiend looking fantastic on this one. I would give them the, uh, the title of being competitive in this, but honestly, with the scoreline being where it is, I don't know if that's the right phrase to use. Dreamer gets Dimki next. AK in hands, of course. The pistol being won by the T-side. They can get the rifles right in against several players. Galil's in, mostly. The UMP... Mac 10 and a Deagle to back it all up. Fiend playing in towards that A-bomb site, though, so the numbers game might be their main advantage against the CT forces. JR might try to take face out towards Lombard. Nick might get caught off guard towards the apartments. He'll try to shout some damage. Nothing much comes through for him. JR just find the flank and get one frag for it, so there's one casualty involved. With Dow finding a sneak angle in the midst of the smoke, I don't think he's going to get detected either. He's seen Dreamer, caught him, looks back towards Victor, does not see Red Star, though. No. Lee lines up a couple more sprays, does not get a kills against them, though. It's a 2v2 scenario. Make that one as Bubble chimes in. Yeah, very messy for both teams. Even a gap in that murder smoke means that JR can punish if there is a reposition. Down on 60 points of health. Maybe thinking about going over to the Deagle. Well, he's picked up. Got to land these perfect shots at the perfect times. He does find Victor. Now a one-on-one. -on -one. SMG out against Bubble. He's low HP as well. JR might be able to utilize that gap in the smoke to identify where he is. If only he had a HE. He's going to try to challenge him directly on the site. He knows exactly where Bubble is. To wrap that cord, try and catch Bubble, pre-fires it, gets his frag together, but I think he's no going to be a little bit short of time. Yeah, no kit, he's going to run for it. Grab a Galil, can't find the AK. It will be a safe weapon, but it will be around for Fiends. And that whole round highlights just how important good utility usage is, and if it's poor, you're going to get punished. JR was able to spot both players on the edge of that moto smoke. That's a mistake that could not come through from Fiend again, because they did everything right. Dreamer gets this first pick onto Bondic, and from here, they deal with the next wraparound player. Yeah, Dav makes... Uh, he's kind of in a one-and-done position, isn't he? Just hoping that something gets presented of it. JR does the best work he can. Unfortunately, without that kit, that round's not going to happen, and they're going to force again. They're going to try and see if they can keep pressure on. Onyx will try for a kit this time around. On the back of Dimki. It's playing out towards the apartments. Pretty aggressive agon in apartments, which could end up biting them. They can't get the uh, diffuse kit back out. Bondic in with the kill on a bubble. Frag found to start. The CT side have the advantage this time. Can Fiend turn it back in their control? They've been great with the trading game. Now, Bondic has got to receive another flash if he really wants to swing out wide. Might be able to deal with Victor. Gets traded instantly, and now it allows Fiend just to combine onto the A side. They do get flashed off in this long position. 
Then Kiada Pit nades out the apartment, looking past that smoke again, trying to try and utilize a gap, and it is not one there this time, and Redstar's gonna get above that smoke. Find the trade to a three on three scenario. Retake should be on for Onyx here. I just caught quick switching. JR might be able to do some damage with this MP9 up close, which just doesn't happen. And Han even makes it a couple of kills out to that bracket's entrance. Impulse has to go for this. Mars out, Red Star's back's turn, he could have been a little bit more patient, probably found more info or more presence on the site, but as he fired on the first contact, Dreamer can get the kill off the back of that and get the 13th on the board for Fiend. Onyx still yet to win a CT round, they've forced the issue so many times, surely they've got to eco now. Yeah, you'd have to imagine so. They didn't do enough economical damage in that round for me to decide to go forcing again. And you've got to imagine, this is quite frustrating. Bondit gets two kills in that long position before being traded, and the support's just not there. The mini pit player struggles of Dimki, rotations are slow. Onyx, they were up, what, 2-0? and oh? They were up 4-3 and three at one point, and then they've won, what, one out of the past 11 rounds. It's just not good enough. On the uh, upgrade pistol, Eco here. Deagle's out on four individuals. CZ for Bondic. Dimki going to try and force forward against Red Star. Spotted. Red Star still wins the fight. Down on 19 HP and still f Onyx just can't catch a break. Fiends finding everyone. Bondic next to fall in the apartments. Rotations inbound towards that, uh, from that B site into A. Your JR and Dav going to back up impulse as the A hit looks to be... The commitment from Fiend, but with the weapon advantage, like, is there a chance for Onyx here? At least they've got the stack. That's the positive they've got here on the A site, and Fiend are going to be running into it. They could go quite dry on this long position, which allows JR to try and isolate a couple of these fights. It's still going to be difficult with the Deagle. Arn gets his kill, two left in Impulse and Dav. Rabubble moving up, looking out towards that pit position as seen his CT member, captures the headshot. And as Dav falls all the same, it's all five alive for Team Fiend. 14 to five on the board for Fiend. And Onyx, it was an eco, so forgiveness is abound. The guns out, however, are gonna be their last real chance to make anything happen here on Inferno. Else we've been looking towards map two, Fiend's own pick. And probably the end of the series on the back of that. And whenever you're the underdog, if you can't outplay or outread your opposition, you've got to out-aim them. And we're just not seeing that enough from Onyx. We're seeing very minimal from some of the star players. We need to see individuals getting more involved. And it's difficult to do so because for Fiend, individually, everyone's performing. No one's dropping off. Near the miracle, I think. At least they get the kill on Bubble this time. They've been nailed to hell out of the banana position. Dab on 31 HP. Now on 79, Red Star sneaking his way in. Can he catch the player over at Boiler? The nade's out, indicating that he is close. Dimki is going to return out of position. Ooh. Victor, ready for what? JR to aggress. He's just got the read so perfectly. I don't get that at all. And now for the tease, I can just start the explosion up on this long take. Han looking to try and trade off his teammate. Doesn't quite happen. They've still got a chance of being able to pick up that bomb and line up for a moment there. Han still does damage. Almost got two kills out of it, though. How much info did Dreamer hear? Did he hear both players getting tagged? Did he think there's only one man out here towards that short control? He must have heard some of it, called it into his teammates. There are some players, at least one that's completely lit. Dimki waits on the boost. Bondic will catch Dreamer. Victor gets Dimki dropping off the boost. And now it's a man advantage, but only a single man advantage for Onyx. It's Bondic in the bat lines. Dav and Impulse are on the way on the rotations. The incendiaries have stalled the T-side players here on short. Both of them coming in from short. Flashes over, or can't get towards the gap here. Han gets caught regardless, and Bondic can make it two frags to get that first round of the CT side for Onyx. Now, thank goodness one of the Ukrainians is able to recover that. JR just thinking about making an info play with no information, just pushing through that smoke, no flash, no assistance, no peeking from mid, and he just gets capitalized from it. Bondic doing as much work as possible and probably been my highlight guy in the second half. I know that he's only nine kills and 15 deaths. He's the one showing the impactful kills, though. And rifles back in at the rebuy. Of course, Fina got plenty of cash to afford this. Onyx need to rest on this rifle round to become successful, though else they're going to be out of this map up again. We're trying to deny a map point for the CTs. Take it away from Fina and keep it as far away as possible. Impulse is all upset towards Boiler. Can't see anything as of right now. Now, Fiend's not putting much presence in brackets at all, and it's mainly just been the set plays when they've been able to get some long control or even the short wrap.
Onyx not finding a lot of information down on this B site, playing it quite defensively. Going for some of the retaking nades atop of Banana. Get smoked off from that position. Same thing for Bondic here at Moto. We were a red start. Marking the apps to gain a rotation position for all five players of Fiend. Incendiary is well timed. It does siphon off one individual from his backup. But I was going to take the opportunity to just to peek straight in towards them here on short. Impulse almost got caught for it. Fortunately, the spray misses, but so does the orb. Peek back in. We'll catch Bubble to a five on four. Now Incendiary forced him out of the bomb site. Now looking up towards apps. Does not catch them just yet. The smoke is in the way to give a bit more cover to the T side line. Smoke's back for Fiend to get back to the cross bond. Still watching. Dimkey comes up with one frag. Victor can trade it. And double up and look to triple in as well. Bondic shuts him down. A three on two still favors Onyx. Fiend have the sight though. Need to get that bomb plant soon. A uh, dreamer could just be able to re-smoke Moto, pick up that bomb, get it back down to the site. And for Onyx, it seems as if they're all going to be coming through from that long side position. Bondic's low. They don't have a lot of nades to work with. Need to run this frag. Not able to get it. It's all in the orb of Han. Gets that first frag through the wall bang. Peek in a second. Look for JR. Oh! But doesn't get it. The CT player just holds the clutch. But it was damn close. What was that? Line up with the smoke? That was an awful moto smoke that came through. We could see down in the mini pit position what that lineup is supposed to do for that individual of Dreamer. And the smoke just doesn't go down at all. So it provides no cover for him or Han in that post plant. The orb tries its absolute best to get that clutch together. Dreamer is just trying to get out to pit. Realizes that smoke's not down. And Han just can't get the job done. Does as much as possible. Onyx, they're adding some more rounds to their tally now. Still got seven to go to equalize against Fiend, though. There's a lot of time, a lot of distance between them and the leaders. All bit of impulse, checking out that second mid entrance. It's only a, uh, a half by this time around for Fiend. So the economy has been hurt despite the bomb plant bonus. And they'll go for full guns out in the next one. They have to take this one on the chin, or they could still win it out with a Deagle. Potential. Tech 9 and CZ also in their mix as well. MK. Backing up to try and look into the apartments with Bondic. Great face out for the AK. Catches that player tagged up. Further flashes coming over. The T side can catch off Bondic and get Dimki as well. Impulse back at Moto. Smoked off from both sides. The bomb will go down. The retake is on. Uh, just that lurk up to the apartments because Dream was able to get so far forward. As soon as he takes the contact, that information oh, should no. have been retrieved. And this whole round's done. You've got to back off. There's no way they can go for this retake. And it just makes you wonder sort of what the communication is there. Because we see the first player just falling immediately out on that moto peak. They should have had the information that Dream was pushed up as aggressively. And that's going to enable Fiend to get to 15 on map point on Onyx's map pick. Maybe Red Star might give up an exit frag, but it doesn't mean much here. The revive will be on for Fiend. It's only a half play in this round. The economy is going to be on a fine state. Onyx taking all the risks here. Losing some of those weapons will be disastrous towards them. It won't be so much so for the Fiend side. With one more round to go for this T-half to gain the map. The pick of Onyx. It's looking like it's dire straits for the opposing half. You gotta imagine that's such a kick in the teeth for Onyx. You've worked hard these last couple of rounds. You don't let that 1v3 clutch come into Han. Instead, you're able to get that trade off and, and make sure you're staying alive. And then you have a look at what Fiend brings to the table. It's an eco with a hero AK, and they completely overwhelm the A site. The round is there. It's 15 on the board now for the Belgarians. For Onyx, they don't have any more safety nets to work with. They've got to push for OTE. Need some flash in for the uh, CTs, further utilities to try to suppress out the apartments. Nades in. Damage done to Bubble is going to be escaped here by the T-side player. Not a massive amount overall here for the Onyx camp to pick up upon. And Fiend play the slow, careful default this time. Now, Onyx are desperate for an opening amount advantage. Just some sort of way in. Bondic even just gets forced off angle. Just with a slight util. Red Star's not seeing anything on porch side or around the short position. Fiend have still got plenty of opportunities. Now, they're leaving Victor incredibly deep in bottom banana, expecting that maybe JR aggresses forward and over pushes. Smoke set, incendiary is at the ready for impulse. ARVP is watching in the apartments. M4 bubble sees the one man. JR also wants to get back out of dodge and engage against the fight. The impulse missing that first shot allows Bubble a second chance, but a second peek in for the orb catches that player. Meanwhile, that baits in rotations. They think it's going to have to be an A play. No one's out towards Speedway, though. The rap play is going to be denied. Dav going to get caught up by Victor, who turns it to a four versus four. 
Uh, just that one fight just drew so much away. Dav getting off of B and even Victor aggressing into the church angle. M4 in, sees his man, gets JR. I think this comes through against Dreamer, who's going to be tagged up in the nades on towards Victor. Keeps him low HP, catching him, pulse to the shoulder. Can't quite get his 3k, so the AWP can bring it back to evens, but not for long. Hans AWP tries in, Dimki onto four. Red Star watching out, Banana backs our turn, but he's going to cover that off and say him. As Han looking to try support, Red Star sprays through on the second man, and Han gets his AWP involved to make it 16-7. For the Fiend side to close out their opponent's map pick, Onyx gave it their best try, but we knew coming into this pick, we knew seeing how Fiend had picked into Inferno so much in the Tier 1 tournaments that it was going to be difficult for them. That's exactly how it